this morning as we ha were heading to the customs to cancel our vehicle permisos, inching forward now at the border. That was it. And so I saw someone taking a photo. Now they're always taking a photo of Jess. They never take a photo of me. And yet this time they were taking a photo of me. And so I said to Jess, okay, well that's it. They are sending photos of us ahead so that the narcos or whoever can get us as we leave the city and whisk us away and leave us out in the desert and steal our German Shepherd. Moxie, Greg, and I are riding around the world to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. We're donating 10% of roughly sales to the fundraiser and posting a new episode every week. It's a big dog on two wheels adventure for girls empowerment. So follow along and please lend your support. motorbike nicely parked here at the sort of exit if such a thing exists of our wild campsite and we have another one here that has basically thrown itself into this tree mm -hmm. we're gonna have this pre-cooked rice it's like um, like wild rice with some vegetables so that's gonna be a good base so Jess worries about getting the tent up first because She's thinking about her desire to nap, knowing that Moxie can nap anywhere. And yet, who is it whose first thought is to get the travel bedroll out for Moxie to be able to have maximum comfort at the campsite? Okay. Touche. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> Did it hit you? Yeah, and then it smacked me in my face. <laughs> what a dick move when I was trying to, I was trying to dick move you and then you dick moved me right in my face. That's the, that's the, that's the way we roll here. We just dick move each other. So I'm, I'm just guessing here. I can't fucking do this math. It says there's 500 grams in this thing. But it's saying that for nine portions, you put 360 grams and 1678, milliliters. So I'm doing 250 grams, which is neither of these. That's my side. Always think about which side the ninjas could get you from. So we've got bikes on these sides. We've got the tree on this side and exposed on this side, which means that Jessica is getting the protected side, and my ass is going to be out in the wind uh, on this side where the ninjas could be. So it's pre-cooked rice. So I don't know if you're supposed to add stuff to this, but I'm going to. And then I'm going to add to it some red pepper. I've got an onion. And the other cool thing I want to try is this black garlic. So I saw this at the supermarket in Mexico City, and I've never tried black garlic. So I imagine it'll have a similar sort of taste and maybe it's just a novelty that it's black, but we will add this to our rice um, and that should be a good enough meal for tonight. One of the things that your Tillamook dry bag is good for is collecting firewood once you're at the campsite. Just be careful that you don't have any stowaway insects, so clean it out really well afterwards. 
and do it gently so that you don't damage the waterproofing. Just a quick time out to tell you how you can support the Go Roughly Around the World adventure for Girl Up. You can donate directly to Girl Up at goroughly.com slash world dash adventure. You can make a purchase at goroughly.com where 10% goes towards the fundraiser. Tell all your friends and family about it. And of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, now back to the adventure. Here's my black garlic. It does have a different smell, so they must do something to it in order to get it this color. Or maybe it's marinated? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. I just really thought that it was a cool novelty. and it's actually fermented garlic. I don't know what it's been fermented in. It is black inside and out. So it smells really good. It sort of smells like a, um, almost like a vegetable cube or something like that. Like that flavor that you get from um, like a stock cube. Is it gonna tip you over? probably be an early night because it's going to be an early morning. Tomorrow is all about continuing up and out through Copper Canyon. We need to get up uh, on our way or past Chihuahua if possible. And uh, Monday, which is the following day, is about crossing the border and we will be in the United States where our buddy Keith is going to be meeting us at the border. We're going to ride with him for a few days and thus the adventure continues. This really was the best campsite ever. It had everything that we wanted. It was 100% like isolated. There was absolutely not a single person who came by. You can see some poops around. Looks like there were some donkeys at some point here or some cows that they were grazing, but nobody came by while we were here. Um, it's a pine forest, so we had all the nettles on the ground, so it made for a really nice night. There was no wind, and we did have this beautiful fire, which is firing me now. We had a campfire incident. From we, this one. We put Moxie a little bit too close to the fire. Better her bed than her. Really, though, I'm not sure how that happened. I found a big sort of coal on there. So it held out as long as it could, but few things are fireproof mm -hmm. and the tender pot tracker certainly is not one of them. But we had set it up, Greg, set it up properly so that the wind was always um, away from us. Um, so we were able to sit there and get the heat and then we weren't getting smoked out. Right now I'm getting smoked just because of where I'm standing. But it was a really lovely evening. We are going to ride out of here. Moxie's not coming with me because it's a bit of a difficult stretch to get out. She's right here. She wants to come with me, but I feel more comfortable just doing this dirt stretch alone. And we're going to go up to Creel, which uh, I haven't seen before, but Greg has. Um, which is sort of like the top of like the Copper Canyon sort of road. And then we're going to head over to Chihuahua. The goal is to get past Chihuahua, but I don't know if we'll, we'll make that. We did wake up a little bit later thinking that it was going to be freezing, but it wasn't. It was okay. Did we, did we wake up a little bit Okay, later? I woke up a little bit later. Greg had his alarm at like 5-ish and um, I got up around like 6.30. I can seem to lift my head straight Whoa.
out of space and she's doing it across the street away from us because a street dog has befriended her and rather than shoo off the street dog which incidentally gets moxie crazy she is uh, chosen to sit apart from us so that the street dog can stay with her and not be harassed by moxie's jealousy Running for the lies, a game they play. And then a mere a couple of hours later, all of a sudden, it has totally been transformed. And it like jumped out at us. It just surprised us. It's like it hijacked us. Riding along beautiful hills. All of a sudden, the next thing you know, you like blink and it's just straight, flat Chihuahua country. And I don't mean the little dogs. It seems to be, I guess what you'd call like a Zona Franca. Like there's all these, uh, I think NAFTA related American and Canadian businesses that have their locations here, uh, import, export, whatever. So you've got all kinds of tractor sales, you've got um, agricultural and farming in, um, concerns. Just one after the other after another on a highway that never ends. And they're just along the side and it just, it's like not really Mexico anymore. I mean, it's totally Mexico. It just, from where we were coming, it's, it's like totally different. finally found some place to pull over and eat and it seems to be I wouldn't say that it's a Mennonite restaurant but it seems to be a Mennonite influence restaurant no, that that way Mennonite influence restaurant because I think northern Mexico has some pockets or a pocket of Mennonites there you know community there's like certain areas of and so I think that the German is a response to that. Es que en esta región hay mucha menonita. Ah, okay. Se llama tres culturas porque hay etnia indígena, eh, menonita, es muy bonito todo.
So now, we have entered into a major crisis. We were headed in this sort of roundabout, off the main highway direction to a cabana that Jess found that looked very promising and very pleasant. The issue is that the cabana is like the northernmost sort of cabanas or really hotels that we're seeing sort of in the greater Chihuahua area. And just now the cabana informed me by WhatsApp that they are not obliged to receive us. And we think it's because we were the only potential guests this evening and it just wasn't worth it. Although we are paying good currency. So now we have this issue where that cabana was like the northernmost option. And so do we swing around and come south? Do Are there hotels? Because it's like a Mad Max dead zone. No, we're gonna stay in a motel. We're gonna stay in one of those like drive up motels as long as they accept moxing. That's really our only option. Otherwise we have to do an hour and 15 minutes out of the way and it's not worth it. Now when you say- we have to wake up early so that we can when you say motel, are you talking like... It's not a sex hotel, it's not an outdoor hotel. It is because sometimes in Mexico, yeah. motel means sex hotel. When, when it's written motel, but it, they really mean like, mm, sex hotel. Okay. Mm, uh, sex hotel. Okay, okay so... I'd like you to Hopefully, and on Google, it actually had a photo of a bunch of motorcycles out front. It was a motorcycle gang. It was a motorcycle gang. And hopefully, this place is not going to give us bed bugs. It'll be okay. And then Moxie can have a good night's sleep, and tomorrow we're crossing over. <laughs> Mexico in general and the Juarez area in particular have a terrible reputation for for violence and for criminality and delinquency and all of the other bad things. And yet, uh, in our experience of having traveled through Mexico multiple times, we have encountered nothing but really good people and really beautiful places and just really incredibly positive experiences. So we could not be more positive ambassadors for Mexico. Hey, Mexico Tourism Bureau, think about it. We just absolutely love the country. And yet, at the same time, why not have a giggle about reputation? And so, uh, this morning, as we ha were heading back to the Banjercito, the customs to cancel our vehicle permisos, inching forward now at the border, that was it. And so I saw someone taking a photo. Now, usually they're taking a photo of Jess. They're always taking a photo of Jess. They never take a photo of me. And yet, this time, they were taking a photo of me. And so I said to Jess, okay, well, that's it. They are sending photos of us ahead so that the narcos or whoever can get us as we leave the city and whisk us away and leave us out in the desert and steal our German Shepherd and our very much used and banged and battered motorbikes. So that did not happen. I'm here to, to say that none of those bad things happened, but if you can't have a giggle about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
esta cosa de Corea para Moxi, uh, su agua y estas uh, cosas es mi ropa y mi computadora uh, y este lado es de uh, cosas uh, para, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, Make-up y todo. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ¿Cómo se llama o qué? Moxi. Moxi. Ajá. lo ponen de que muy inseguro pero respeta mucho a los turistas le damos la bienvenida a la gente y tratamos de que sea una bonita experiencia para ellos so texas has no helmet law or better yet texas has a you have to wear a helmet if you're under 21 law and if you're not under 21 you don't have to wear a helmet law So I am all for wearing a helmet. I've just in the last few days had enough crashes to prove why a helmet is important. Uh, and yet that said, I am all for a standing in line at the border on your bike not wearing a helmet uh, acceptable law. So that's what I'm taking advantage of is to just air out a little bit while we're at the border. Meanwhile, we put Moxie's sunshade on because it is kind of a scorcher and that's what the sunshade is for. So she's hanging out there, Jess is watering her on the move, or better yet, on the not move, as we again are waiting for our turn at the border. Jess uh, clipped past a whole bunch of cars and weaved in and out of some lanes like a pro to get us up this far. And now we're sort of looking at the last stretch and saying, well, they're We could cut and then we'd kind of be douches. And also, you're well within view of the um, you know, border. And Jess with a big German Shepherd on her bike already looks obvious and attracts attention. So we really don't necessarily need to attract attention for the wrong reasons. So I think we're gonna hang out and just inch our way forward. This really at the pace it's going is probably 20, 30 minutes. So in the long run of a round the world motorcycle trip, nothing. Hi guys, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed that episode. You probably saw in this episode that I was riding a little bit crooked uh, on my bike. And it's funny, it's only when I was reviewing the footage for this episode that I actually noticed that my handlebars are bent. So that fall that I had in Guanajuato, um, Uh, it was just that easy fall. I just tipped over right before the uh, the stairs in that little alleyway. It bent my handlebars. And what I noticed is, if from watching the footage, is that my one shoulder is higher than the other because it's bent. And I was feeling a hell of a lot of back pain uh, for these, these past few weeks now since, since that time. And uh, I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought maybe I wasn't sleeping well or that there was just something uh, going on with a, a, a tweaked nerve or something in my back. But it makes sense now. It's the handlebars. It's that change in position that I was used to, which is causing all of this pain. Uh, so it just, it reminds me just how adaptable we can be. Uh, I didn't really notice it until I saw the footage. And it's sort of silly when you think about it because you think, well, if you're feeling pain, like maybe it's something to do with your riding position, but it just didn't click for me. Um, but I'm glad I figured that out. So again, my bike is going to be going into servicing. Uh, I'm going to get a new handlebar put on that is straight and um, hopefully that will deal with that back issue that I'm having. In this episode, we crossed at Ciudad Juarez 
And it's been a goal for me to cross at that border crossing ever since Greg told me the story about this guy. This was a while ago, probably 15 years ago. Uh, he was crossing from the States into Mexico. And as he crossed, he just saw this huge line of federales and he got really intimidated and he turned around and he went to a different border crossing. And of course, Juarez has been on the news a lot for drug trafficking and there's a lot of um, stuff going on in that area. But I wanted to give it a try and see if it really was as bad as uh, as people make it out to be. And you'll, you saw, we were in the city of Chihuahua and people were just really friendly. It was just a typical Mexican city. There was nothing dangerous about it. We were there during the daytime, which is always the key. You're not going to want to ride at night in any of these places. Just like you wouldn't want to ride at night in like a downtown wherever, uh, where you know that there could be some gang or drug violence. So we crawled, we went up and uh, we were at the, in the town there and nothing. It was a little bit of a letdown. I sort of thought that there was going to be something going on there. Um, not that I want to get myself into trouble or anything like that, but I guess I wanted to see what all the hype was about and you know daytime at, on a can't even remember what day that was if it was a, a Friday or a Saturday crossing nothing really was going on so there was that but it was just again a reminder about how people will make out a place to be really dangerous especially if they haven't been there or they're just viewing the things on the news um, it and it's just you, you got to think about it um, in the sense that Every city has dangerous parts. I don't think that there's a single city out there where you would say, oh my God, there's like, there's never anything going on anywhere here. Where you saw that we were riding through Copper Canyon in this episode, which is awesome. It's like, it's like the Grand Canyon, but I think it's like four times deeper. So it's really, um, really spectacular. Like the views as you're going through and it is so windy. Uh, it's, it's a rider's dream. Um, and I know a lot of people prefer Baja to Copper Canyon, maybe because it's closer to California. It's like, you can just cross down. Um, uh, but there is a lot of dirt riding in Copper Canyon as well. Um, the views are just amazing. Uh, so I would suggest if you're thinking about coming down to Mexico when you wanted to do uh, either on-road or off-road, I know both Baja and Copper Canyon um, have their pros and cons, but I think I would go Copper Canyon. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube. We have new episodes coming out every Sunday at 11 a.m. Central, so you don't want to miss that. And if you haven't already followed us on Facebook and Instagram, we're at Go Roughly, so check us out. On our Facebook page, we have Facebook Live that goes on. Um, we've got our stories as well, so you can really see up-to-date information about where we are and what we're up to. Um, and you can always follow along with us if you want to see exactly where we are. Come to our page, at Go Roughly slash world dash adventure. We've got a GPS tracker there. You can see exactly where we are um, and the route that we've taken. Um, so if we're coming up to your area, let us know. We'd love to come out and meet you and ride with you. Uh, we're always looking for fun stuff like that. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.